Hi, my name is Bobby Clue. I'm the Executive Director of the Somerset Pulaski County Chamber of Commerce, and you're watching the Via Media Lunch and Spotlight. For the month of March, I'm happy to bring in and highlight two great local businesses for you. Uh, we're going to be talking with Angela Lopez from Somerset Pet Lodge, as well as Jeff Moret from Via Media. Also, we bring in some of the best speakers for our monthly luncheons that the state of Kentucky has to offer. I'm proud that for the month of March, we're bringing in former Kentucky governor, Mrs. Martha Lane Collins, to speak with us. So thank you very much for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy today's programming. Uh, we have a couple of two for Tuesdays today. We have a couple of local business speakers. First and foremost, we have from Via Media, who's here filming today, and I, I keep, I always like to remind people of this because it is new. We've entered into a new partnership with Via Media, and they're here, here filming our, our luncheon today, so we want to thank them very much. This is going to be televised, and Jeff, if I get this wrong, it's 8 and 19, correct? Channels 8 and 19 on local cable, so please tune in. Uh, this will be on there, and you can always catch up on this, so if you know somebody didn't make today's luncheon, tell them to tune in, and they can uh, catch this on an upcoming day. But I'm going to ask uh, Jeff if he'd like to come up and speak. Uh, my name is Jeff Moret. I'm the general manager here with Via Media. And I just want to chat a little bit today about Via Media and kind of what we do in the market. Uh, first thing, we're the largest independent rep firm in the nation. Uh, we represent roughly 52 different MSOs. And here locally in the south central part of the state, we represent roughly seven cable systems and about 55,000 different websites for advertising. Now, what does that mean to you, the small business owner? That means to you that we are not selling products by Via Media that we make money on. We want to make sure that what we offer you is something that you see benefit from and helps your business grow and helps those cash registers ring. Um, there's three things that we do. The first thing we do, of course, is television advertising. Uh, channels 8 and 19 will have this. You can be a sponsor of the program for as little as $50 a week. Um, as well as the second thing you do is uh, we do is if you want to buy a spot on Duck Dynasty or UK basketball, March Madness is coming up. We can put a 30 second commercial on that in this area. And then the second thing we do is we basically, we take that same television commercial and we put it on roughly 55,000 websites nationwide. Um, but the good thing is, is for instance, the websites that we represent, Facebook, uh, ESPN.com, HGTV.com, a lot of you sports fan, KSRRadio.com. Uh, we could take that same 30 second commercial that you're putting it on TV on partners like Access Cable, Time Warner Cable, Duo County down in, uh, in uh, Russell Springs. And we basically, we can target your demographics. So if you say, hey, I want 35 to 54 year olds, males, we target those websites with that. Third thing we do is we represent Google, Yahoo, and Bing from a search standpoint. So what we like to say is, no matter if you're seeing it on TV, seeing it on the internet, or searching for it, we put your business out there. Uh, one thing is that I always like to do is just don't take our word for it. Hello, my name is Eddie Thompson. I'm general manager at Don Franklin Chevrolet Buick GMC in Somerset, Kentucky. You know, we started out with Via Media just doing cable TV advertising, and we've since expanded that to the digital. Via Media's digital package has helped us in so many ways. Uh, we're reaching customers now that we haven't been able to reach before. Our percentages have went up on our website hits and we feel like that we are touching more customers through the digital package with Via Media than ever before. So pretty much, you know, the main thing we try to do is we try to make customers' cash registers ring through the power of, 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 of television and cable and online. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. If you have any questions, please call us or uh, visit us online. Thanks. Our second Two for Tuesday speaker is Miss Angela Lopez. Angela is the co-owner of Somerset Pet Lodge. Hi, I'm Angela Lopez with Somerset Pet Lodge. And Somerset Pet Lodge is where your pet comes to stay and play while you're all away, okay? Um, we have a state-of-the-art facility. We have over 20,000 square feet of exterior outside play yards, as well as we recently added two indoor play yards. So when it's inclement weather, your dogs, when they're coming and staying with us, they can go outside to potty and come into play even during the snow and the rain. Um, each stay is customized to the individual dog. If you've got an older dog that requires less activity, more one-on-one -on -one time, we can accommodate that. 
as well as a dog that just needs to be outside a little bit longer playing ball and whatnot. Um, daycare is becoming very popular. We uh, have a lot of clients that bring their pups before work and pick them up happy and tired <laughs> at the end of a long work day. And um, daycare is also a great uh, opportunity for your pet to come by, uh, get used to our facility and our staff so that when you do take a long vacation, they're very comfortable to, and happy to come back and see us. So uh, in addition to those services, we have a full service grooming salon on site with uh, licensed and certified groomers. Um, we provide a stress-free environment for the dogs. And um, grooming starts at $38. So definitely come out and see us. We'd love to earn your business. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the month, month, March Chamber Luncheon. I'd like to call this meeting to order and welcome all of our guests here today, our public officials, their representatives, and certainly our members. I also want to extend a special thank you to our chamber sponsors for their commitment. Our world-class sponsors are Prairie Farms, Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital, Citizens National Bank, Hinkle Contracting, Pulaski County Government, Cumberland Lake Shell, Alton Blakely Family of Dealerships, First and Farmers National Bank, The Job Shop, Via Media, and South Kentucky RECC. Our Chairman Circle sponsors are BB&T, Fort Bank, Evans, Harvel, Atwell & Company CPAs, ReadyMix Concrete, Blackboard Student Services, East Kentucky Power, and Cumberland Security Bank. And our Ambassador Circle sponsors are Reed Brothers Insurance, Modern Vending, Eagle Realty, Hendrickson International, Community Trust Bank, Cumberland Valley National Bank, and Somerset Hardwood Flooring. Again, thank you to all of our sponsors. And if anyone is interested in becoming a sponsor, please feel free to contact the Chamber Office for more information. Thank you to the Center for Rural Development for allowing us to meet in this place and to Schaefer's Catering for the wonderful lunch we're having today. We also owe a big thank you to our Chamber Ambassadors for their many hours of volunteer that they give to the Chamber each month. Each month, one ambassador is recognized for exceptional support of the Chamber. The ambassador of this month is James Adams of Town, Sa Town Money Saver. Thanks to you and the ambassadors for your work for the chamber. Now I'd like to introduce second vice president, Mark Brenzel, to introduce our new members. I'd like to welcome the following new members to our chamber. Please welcome all of our new members. Thank you. Today's corporate sponsor is Alton Blakely Family of Dealerships. Please welcome Brad Gover to the podium who will speak on behalf of the dealerships. Thank you, Megan, and we are proud to sponsor today's Chamber Luncheon. The Alton Blakely Family of Dealerships began back in 1965 when Alton E. Blakely Sr. opened the doors to Alton Blakely Ford Mercury here in Somerset. In 1969, the Lincoln brand of luxury vehicles were added. Ten years later, Alton Blakely Mazda was established, and in 1990, the Alton Blakely family of dealerships welcomed the Honda franchise. A lot has changed over the years, but one thing that has remained the same, that's the Alton Blakely commitment to customer service excellence. We have a strong base of repeat and referral customers, many of whom are here today, and we really appreciate your business over the years and look forward to serving you for many years to come. Thank you for the opportunity to serve your automotive needs. We believe in giving back to this great community in which we live. Look around and you'll see our commitment around the community on the Somerset Community College campus, in our local school systems, at our annual breast cancer symposium that we host with the Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital, and in our support of many of the charitable organizations who do such a great job in our community. In May, we celebrate 49 years of doing business here and we're excited about what 2014 has to offer. If I could direct your attention to the, to the screen, on April 17th, Ford celebrates 50 years of Mustang. This American icon stands in an elite status of automotive nameplates with 50 straight years of production 
and over eight and a half million Mustangs have been built to date. Uh, from the beginning, Mustang has turned heads and we're excited to welcome the latest generation, the 2015 Ford Mustang featuring the iconic 5.0 V8, 3.7 V6, and the all new 2.3 EcoBoost engine. The first turbocharged Mustang in nearly 30 years. Hardworking, capable, dependable. Just a few words that describe the legendary Ford F-Series. The best-selling truck on the planet for 37 years. The leadership streak began back in 1976 with a Ford F-150 and continues today. We're also excited to introduce the all-new redesign, 2015 Ford F-150 with an all-new body and bed constructed using high-strength military-grade aluminum alloys allowing the overall, overall weight to be reduced by as much as 700 pounds, enhancing its efficiency. The 2015 F-150 is the smartest F-150 yet, with features that are a first for pickup trucks, such as active park assist, 360-degree camera view, and an all-new 2.7-liter EcoBoost. The all-new redesigned 2015 Ford Expedition features a new twin-turbo 3.5 EcoBoost V6, for the first time ever and expects to deliver class leading power and improve fuel economy. A new Platinum model is also scheduled to be available as well. The Lincoln Navigator has been reimagined for 2015 and will be equipped with a 3.5 EcoBoost V6 producing 370 horsepower and will deliver a class leading 9,000 pounds in towing capacity. Lincoln will also be introducing their first small luxury crossover, the Lincoln MKC, available with two EcoBoost engines, the two liter EcoBoost that delivers 240 horsepower and a 2.3 EcoBoost that will produce 285 horsepower. Conviction, creativity, and courage is what drives Mazda, and the new Mazda 6 is just an example of this. New Mazda innovations such as Skyactiv technology help the Mazda 6 achieve up to 40 miles per gallon highway while delivering optimum performance. The Mazda 6 has earned an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus distinction. The 2014 Mazda 3, which also features Skyactiv technology, impresses with amazing performance while delivering up to 41 miles per gallon highway. As with the Mazda 6, the Mazda 3 also earned the IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus distinction. The 2014 Kelly Blue Book five-year cost to own awards were announced, and for the second consecutive year, Mazda brand was recognized for having the lowest five-year cost of ownership. The Honda Accord, a benchmark in quality, dependability, and reliability since its debut in 1976. It's a car and driver magazine's 10 best, a record 28 years. The Honda Civic has been delivering excellent dependability and fuel economy for 41 years. With standard features such as the rear view camera and Bluetooth capabilities, it's easy to see why the Civic has been one of Honda's best selling vehicles. The new Civic is an IIHS top safety pick and gets up to 39 miles per gallon highway. In Kelly Blue Book's 2013 brand image awards, Honda was recognized as the best overall brand, best value brand, and also the most trusted brand. We're excited to offer the full line of Ford, Lincoln, Mazda, and Honda vehicles, as well as many different makes and models of pre-owned vehicles. Visit us on the web and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Our speaker today is former Governor Martha Lane Collins, who has the distinction of being the first and only female governor of Kentucky. Originally a school teacher, Ms. Collins has served Kentucky in a variety of roles, including Clerk of the Supreme Court, Lieutenant Governor, President of the State Senate, Chair of the National Conference of Lieutenant Governors, and CEO of the Kentucky World Trade Center. She currently serves as an ambassador at large for international trade with the Kentucky Chamber. Ms. Collins also served as president of St. Catherine College, executive in residence at the University of Louisville School of Business, director of the International Business and Management Center at the University of Kentucky, and is a Harvard University fellow in the John F. Kennedy School of Government. She was elected executive scholar in residence at Georgetown College, where she developed the Center of Commerce, Language, and Culture. 
please welcome former Governor Martha Lane Collins. It would take a whole lot more than a little snow to stop you all, right? It's called persistence, and I love the word persistence uh, and being persistent. And I've been guilty of uh, having that used on me. Um, sometimes it's because uh, stubborn, hard-headed, you know, we could go on and on. But I'm delighted to be here today. I appreciate the invitation. Bobby, we've talked about this now uh, at some of the chamber meetings um, in Frankfurt. And uh, I, uh, he had some dates, but not many. And I chose one, and this is the one I chose, uh, with snow and all. And um, that's good. And I'm delighted to be here because I came today to talk to you about something that I think is extremely, extremely important. You know, when I was governor, I had the opportunity to serve, and I appreciate that and the supporters that I had, um, because we put an emphasis on education and an emphasis on economic development. Those two things go hand in hand. Uh, a company who's thinking about coming to Kentucky obviously wants to know that you're investing in your people, that you're going to have a trained workforce, and that you're going to be keeping up with the times and all the things that, that go into that. And so we worked very, very hard, and we were pretty successful in uh, reverse investment, direct investment, and uh, creating jobs for Kentucky, because at that time, um, the horse industry was down, tobacco was down, uh, coal was down, and we desperately needed jobs in Kentucky. Well, now I'm an ex. I'm a has-been, okay? And I'm always looking for things to do to keep helping Kentucky. And one of the things that I think is extremely important is this opportunity that we have to trade to export Kentucky products and services overseas. There's a great need for them in other countries. We, we have tremendous products. We are very good at our services and consulting and all that type of thing. And so why not find a market overseas where we sell our product? It makes those people happy. We create new friendships in, around the world. They give us money back. We get to bring it in expand our companies, hire more people, and the state has more money. Does that sound pretty good? I think so. And I think it's worth the time and the effort that we put into it. You know, I remember back in 2010 in this very building, I was down here with uh, Governor Bashir when he announced the Kentucky Export Initiative. Packed. The room was packed. And everybody got excited about the things that we could do in Kentucky. And um, that was good, except that we just kind of let them go home. And they went back to work. For those who were exporting, they're saying to themselves, well, business is good. Um, I don't really have time to start looking at another country or uh, expanding what we've got. I probably need to buy some trucks maybe put a new roof on the, on the uh, building, uh, things like that. And so that passed. For those companies who had never exported before, never even really thought about exporting before, uh, they were enthused. But then when they went back to their shops, they thought, oh my gosh, I don't know whether I want to work with those people on those other countries. I don't know whether I want to go overseas. I don't know how to speak their language. I don't know how to work with their government. I don't know how to do any of this. So they th went their merry way, and nothing too much happened. Now, in all fairness, Kentucky's exports have grown since 2010. We're very, very proud of the fact that they are growing at about 10 to 14 percent a year. Last year, we shipped out of Kentucky 25 billion, that's with a B, 25 billion dollars worth of product. We don't have really ports. We're not on an ocean. We're kind of landlocked in some ways. And yet, we did that. 
which goes to show what Kentucky can do, even if we just halfway try. And so we've gotten together, and they've called me in to talk about trade and, and to be involved in the trade for Kentucky. And so, uh, you know, I'm a team player, and I believe in the team. I know what can happen when you have a good team working for you. So we have put together the World Trade Center, the State Economic Development Cabinet, the State Chamber of Commerce, CAM, the Kentucky Association of Manufacturers, and the Commercial Services out of Washington, D.C. If there is a piece, there's a little pamphlet on your table like this, and at the bottom of it, you kind of see the logos of those groups that we've put together, in addition to um, KAED and BEAM. Now, BEAM is a, an agreement between the mayor of Louisville and the mayor of Lexington to try to work with those two counties, Jefferson and Fayette, but also the counties in between, uh, and to work on trade there to expand our companies and create more jobs. So I came today, um, and at the end, I'm gonna be an old school teacher today, if that's okay. Uh, and at the end, I, I'm gonna ask you to do a couple of things for us. But on the inside of this, you'll see a, a little squib from the governor and a little, a little comments, a few comments from Dave Atkinson of the State Chamber. And we're trying to put together this team. The reason for teams is that if each one of these organizations were gonna go overseas and they wanted to do a trade mission or they wanted to go over and try to sell products or whatever, each one of them has to spend so much money and each one of them has to have so much staff and whatever. Why not put it together? Why not get the strengths of all these groups together so that one group can do translation, interpretation, training, all this kind of stuff. Another group will help you with logistics and working with the foreign governments and doing all that kind of thing. So what we've got is a team. If you decide that you want to find out anything about anything, you can call, and we're getting to that page in just a minute. Uh, you, you can call one of these up, and if that's not their field, they will immediately put you with somebody in another uh, organization that can handle what you want, the information you want. On the little uh, right-hand column on page two, it's got a few facts in there, but the important one that I want to bring out is with 96% of the world's consumers outside of the United States of America, Kentucky companies are developing new customers overseas. And as I say, when we have good services, good products, we also make friends. And let's face it, in the world today, we need to make friends. Then if you turn to the next page, it talks about becoming an export advocate in your community. Everyone in this room does not have the capability of exporting. You don't have a product or it's a service that uh, we can't uh, really um, export. Um, so you could also be quite helpful if you know of a company that we need to work with or if you can encourage that company, but there is training for you to become a trade advocate. And it just tells a few things here. I'd like for you to read that over. Uh, and some, there's a step, about five steps there. Then the next page, if you happen to be a company that's already exporting or a company that has not considered exporting, you fill out this sheet. It's not difficult. You see it's just got a few questions on it. And then you can send it in. It's an assessment whether or not you're quite ready. You know, if you walked out of here today and said, I'd like to export, it's not going to happen this month or in six months probably maybe a year, but it takes a while. So what we want everybody to do is to be thinking down the road, what, what's the future gonna be? Are my products gonna stay strong? Am I got, do I have competition that's nipping at my heels right now and I need to put in a new product or I need to find a new market or whatever so that we can start working and getting prepared for the future. And then on the, the uh, last page, 
You see a little write-up about the World Trade Center, the Kentucky Cabinet for Economic Development, and the U.S. Commercial Services. Um, and, and what I want to say is, for example, the World Trade Center uh, has connections all over the world. There are about 300 centers in about 120 countries, something like that. For example, France has 14 World Trade Centers in the country. Um, before Governor Bashir went to India, we uh, were talking to the World Trade Center in Mumbai. The idea is to make the connections and let them know um, and ask questions and get them helping us uh, from that side, as well as the uh, commercial services in the State Department who have connections all over the world. So what we're doing is really providing a lot of services for the companies in Kentucky. And I think we can be quite helpful. There's also, I want to point out, uh, an office in Lexington for the World Trade Center. It's uh, closer, maybe, than going to Louisville or talking to people in Louisville. But they can come, and they will come down here and work with you. So we have this. Then there's a, a little card like this that says 10 reasons why your company should export or consider exporting. And so you can look at that. Now, I tore out, and this was one, I didn't even get the scissors in cutting this out of the newspaper. I just tore it out of the newspaper. States 2013 exports are up 14.3%. So this next year, we expect them to be about 14, 10 to 14%. Um, and then uh, another article, Kentucky sets exports record for third consecutive year. I hope you share some enthusiasm that I have with this. I hope you can see that this might be something that we need. You know, there's so much going on here in Somerset, Pulaski County, and down in this area. I mean, not many people have this many people, Bobby, at lunch, uh, at a chamber meeting. Not many counties have this. Um, you have reports, you have things growing, you have things changing, you have things. You, that's one of the reasons I'm here today, in spite of the snow, is because you have tremendous potential to do some of these things. As I say, it could be a service. It could be something in healthcare. It could be in environmental. It could be uh, in education. It could be there. You know, the sky's the limit. When we talk about our trade partners, Canada is our main trade partner. And I did not get to take a group to Canada when I was governor. I just ran out of time. And so I've been pushing for us to have a trade group to go to Canada. Well, they just did it this past year. And that, if, if we don't have any friends anywhere, if we don't work anywhere, you know, you're in business. So what do you do? You go to the people who are your customers. And so we went to, they went to Canada. I didn't go. They went to Canada, and the partnership and relationship is fantastic. We're probably going to make a trip every year to Canada. So if you know of anybody or you're a company that's dealing in Canada, you might want to hook on and go up and meet with the people there and, and expand your horizons in Canada. Our number two trade partner in the whole world is Mexico. And of course, Mexico is a little um, volatile sometimes. And so we're working there, going to do more and more to build a stronger relationship there. The United Kingdom is our third uh, trading partner, size-wise. And on your table, you'll see a sheet that looks like this because we're putting together a trip to the United Kingdom. Uh, and that's in May for those people who do business there or if you want to go there and see. If you're interested, you let us know what sector you're in, what, you, what your products are or whatever. And there will be meetings for you because they're being set up. It's not just a big group that gets off the bus and you walk into a building and you walk up and down the aisles. You will have a meeting eyeball to eyeball with a person in that company that, that might be a, a partner for you. Um, then China is our next trading partner and Brazil. Those are our five top partners. Now, one of the countries that um, 
we've uh, picked up is, a, well, we're their 11th largest trading partner, and that's Saudi Arabia. And you know what they want? Our cars. And so they, uh, this is something that's relatively new. So I, I want to stress goods, manufactured goods, made goods, but also services, because there's a need for that. Um, I went to um, the Emirates uh, about four years ago, and uh, they wanted somebody to come over and help them with education. And so I got the opportunity to sit in while some of the companies came in from the United States to talk to them about uh, what they could do and how they could help them. You know, you understand that in the Emirates, most of the people there, or a lot of the people there, um, are connected to the royal family. Well, some teenagers, they're all alike all over the world, don't understand why they need to go to school because they're going to be taken care of for the rest of their lives. And so uh, it's interesting to walk into their classrooms because they're kind of sitting there and you wonder, you know, what's the class right now? But they have some outstanding students, just as we have outstanding students, and we want to match them up and, and let them share with each other. But also, um, this is an area where they wanted help in, in uh, government. And I couldn't help but chuckle a little bit because uh, in some of the, you know, Charja or Abu Dhabi or Dubai or some of them, you know, they talk about how you go to the government office. And you get to the government office and they say, come back tomorrow. And so you go home and you come back tomorrow. And they'll look at you and say, come back tomorrow. And so they want to improve the services within their government and within, <laughs> within their uh, uh, emirate uh, so that they can be a better service to the people of their communities. Um, there are so many high-rise buildings in, like in Dubai, for example. I was walking around looking for opportunities and I thought, you know, I could go into the window washing business in Dubai because the buildings just have all kinds of windows except that most of the window washing, now this is four years ago, it's changed now, but the, the window washers didn't go much above the fourth or the sixth floor, and these are much taller than that. Uh, I thought they needed more parking facilities. And, you know, so when you make these trips overseas, you see opportunities, and you can see where maybe you could fit in, or you know somebody that might fit in. And you know, many of you know and are aware of the um, Somerset, the boats, um, when we were in Dubai. Uh, these people were taking their equipment up and down the coast and the boats they had um, to transport things were just you know like made rafts or whatever so that's where the idea of getting those kinds of houseboats without all the trimmings uh, to do this um, so there's there's just lots of opportunities let me ask what would you say is our number one export item aerospace we make engines we make parts, we make things. See, sometimes we don't even know what's happening in our state. There's also, of course, the motor vehicles, the synthetic rubbers, resins, the chemicals, that kind of thing, machinery, computers. But the, in 2013, the number one, the percentage of increase uh, in the product, the number one item was glass in Kentucky. You know, all your iPhones, your, your, uh, all your technical stuff, that glass, you know where it's made? Harrodsburg, Kentucky. And so that increased uh, tremendously. Uh, you know what our fastest growing trade item is? Fastest growing. Asian carp. Asian carp. It's in our rivers. It's in the Ohio River. It's in the Kentucky River. It's getting over into some other places now. We have a little lady down in Ballard County, down next to Paducah, and she catches them, and they package them, and we ship them back to China because it's a delicacy there. So I just wanted to tell you that. If you know anybody who likes to fish, 
doesn't have anything else to do. They can set up a little stand, catch some Asian carp. We can tell you how to package it. We've worked out all the bugs, no difficulty in shipping. You know, if we can ship dipping dots overseas, we can ship most anything, anything. I mean, we have to be sure that they don't stay on the dock too long because they kind of come out of the dot form. And uh, so we're, we're, we're getting really good with logistics, with helping with logistics and with all the paperwork and that kind of thing um, to make the job of our companies easier. So um, other countries that we're going into tremendously um, now, France, Colombia, the Emirates, of course, Spain, some of these others, we're looking wherever they might want Kentucky products. The one, somebody mentioned bourbon. Bourbon's probably in more countries, maybe close to 200 countries around the world. So what I'm saying is let's just ride their coattail right into that country because they've already made contacts with the governments. They've already done the things. And so what we'll do is let them introduce some of us to some other things and, or some other people and we can make things work much more quickly. Now, in all fairness, Kentucky's been a good export state for a long time. We started out with agriculture. We started out with um, coal, with horses, with those things, and, and those are still very, very important to us. But we have to expand, and we have to grow, and we have to uh, be looking in the future to whatever um, we can do uh, to enhance Kentucky's image around the world and to enhance um, our money, our money. I surely am glad um, that um, I'm not in Frankfurt right now because it's tough, it's tough. The need for the money, the needs of the people, the needs um, to, for the future, to prepare for the future, uh, they get more complex and compounded every day. And um, I just want to come here, and as I say, because you're Somerset, Pulaski County, you're, you're good. I've been here. Um, I've been to this facility many times. Uh, it's a great facility. Uh, I come to the Rogers Scholars Program whenever possible. Um, and you all, you all have great opportunities here, or I wouldn't be coming here talking to you because I like to see results. I want us to try something and I want to see a result. I want to see a success story. And that's what we're working on very, very hard. So I'd like to ask you to look at that sheet again. If you need um, another copy, we'll get you some more copies. But I'd like for those of you who can to become uh, a trade advocate. I'd like to ask you to become involved. You know, I can remember, I only had four years. I couldn't succeed myself. And I only had four years. And I was trying to do education, and I was trying to do economic development, and making a lot of trips. You know, my first trip to China was in 1984. If I'd had the money to open up an office in China, we would have been the seventh state to have an office in China. As it is now, we're about the 40th state trying to have a successful office in China, and it's difficult. And you know, one of the things we as Kentuckians, um, we're good at, and that is we like for people to come visit us. I, I used to say if I could get a company to come into Kentucky, I stood better than a 50-50 chance that they'd decide to land here because of the people, because you are hospitable, uh, and, and, but it's the culture. And when I'm talking to young people, I'll say, you know, doctors have a culture, teachers have a culture, ball players have a culture, everybody has a culture. But because they look like us, talk like us, eat what we eat and everything, we accept it, we roll with it. But it's when you start working with another country where they eat something different or they speak a different language we don't quite understand. But I found that the people are the same everywhere. Um, in negotiating with some of the Japanese, some of the other countries that I've dealt with, the men, 
they get nervous. They get scared. They get embarrassed, just like we do. They, they have sweaty palms when they're trying to, when the pressure's on. I mean, so it's just like us. And, and so when we're trying to determine what product will go somewhere else, I mean, we have to understand the country. And we have to talk to them about what their needs are because they want to provide for their families and for their people just like we do. Just exactly like we do, okay? And uh, while the, our two governments sometimes have a little difficulty, uh, our people get along great. And that's what we need to be working on more and more. But I'd like for you to become an advocate and I'd like for you to think about this. And uh, there are companies in town that maybe, what I started to say a minute ago, when I was governor, unfortunately, a lot of times a company would be having trouble and we didn't know it because they didn't tell anybody. And we wouldn't know until the boxes were packed and the truck had backed up to load them up that they were leaving us or that they really needed help. So, Let's don't let them get in that shape. Let's start thinking and helping. And if you're somebody, I, I, I tell our people when we go out, if you say, do you, wanna, do you wanna start exporting? You're not gonna have a lot of people hold up their hands and say, yeah, I want to, yeah. Because the, it's business, it's confidential, it's whatever. And so if we can think of people or help recommend companies that we need to go talk to. We'll sit down, we'll take them by the hand and, and take them step by step where they, where they need to go and what they need to do. But I hope you'll invite us back. I hope that I can bring back members of the team to come back and talk and tell you exactly what they can do and how they can help you and allow us to at least get things started um, and get things going uh, for the future because we've only hit the tip of the iceberg in Kentucky. When I said $25 billion worth of product went overseas last year, that's done by one third. No, not one third. 3% of our companies here in Kentucky. So there are thousands of companies in Kentucky that are capable of exporting can be successful in exporting, and we'd like to help you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. As a token of our appreciation, we have a Mountain Workshop pictorial book that was done of our community for you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Um, remember, our next luncheon will be Tuesday, April 1st at noon. And our guest speaker will be Dr. Michael Karf, who is in uh, University of Kentucky Executive Vice President of Health Affairs. Congratulations to the March Chamber of Commerce Ambassador of the Month, James Adams, with the Town Money Saver. Please join us for our upcoming calendar of events. like to be an official sponsor of the Somerset Pulaski County Chamber of Commerce Luncheon Spotlight or become a member, we would love to have you. Please contact myself or Via Media. Thank you to our world-class sponsors. Thank you to our Chairman Circle sponsors. Thank you to our Ambassador Circle sponsors. The Center for Rural Development for hosting today's luncheon and Schaefer's Catering for the wonderful food for today's event. Thanks again for tuning in to the Via Media Luncheon Spotlight. As always, the Chamber of Commerce greatly appreciates your support and tune in next month for more exciting news from the Chamber of Commerce during our Luncheon Spotlight. <laughs>